The phrase attention to detail takes on an entirely different significance than the context of a war movie. A detailed and credible immersion adds an unshakable sense of realism to a production, enhancing the proceedings emotional impact and leaving an indelible impression. So, from examples of lesser known military etiquette all the way to obscure weaponry characteristics, I'm Ewan, this is War Culture, and here are 10 insanely accurate war film details. Number 10. Eldridge's Tabasco Sauce the Hurt Locker. The Hurt Locker's combat and bomb disposal sequences feature a spectacular level of attention to detail, reflecting the production's consultation with real-life military experts. The entire weaponry and equipment used by Jeremy Renner and company are all rooted in that of real US ordnance and equipment from the 2003 Iraq War. But that's all par for the course for a war movie. One of Bigelow's more intricate touches in The Hurt Locker, however, can be seen attached to the name tag of Brian Geraghty specialist Owen Eldridge. Upon close inspection, Inspection, Eldridge is shown to have a small bottle of Tabasco sauce strapped to the front of his uniform. Funnily enough, there is a long and storied history between the US military and the hot sauce. Tabasco has long been used by soldiers in order to spice up bland MRE rations. The sauce has been included in field packs since 1990, 14 years before the Hurt Locker takes place. Number 9. Barnes's NVA Belt Buckle Platoon Oliver Stone's platoon stands as one of the more realistic and moving portrayals of the Vietnam War. Cultivating an intense anti-war rhetoric, Stone's gritty 1986 offering channels his own harrowing personal experiences of armed service, with a writer and director having also served in Vietnam. And Platoon features the exact level of detail one would expect from a film directed by a Vietnam veteran. The military gear is weathered and worn by the time in the jungle. Soldiers adapt their uniforms to fit the tropical conditions surrounding them. There's an endless catalog of detail featured within Platoon, but arguably Stone's most well hidden touch adorns the waist of Staff Sergeant Barnes. A human representation of the darker aspects of war, Tom Berenger's unhinged soldier can be seen wearing a belt with a distinctive red star on it. The star is an identifying mark of the North Vietnamese Army, better known as the NVA. Barnes's garment is likely a trophy taken from a fallen Foe, a costuming choice perfectly in keeping with his ruthless character and a grisly real life practice of armed conflict. Number 8. Stubbing Out Cigarettes. Valkyrie. Despite taking some wild liberties with the 20th July plot, and no, I'm not talking about Stauffenberg's big, big booty, Valkyrie features an astounding level of visual detail, with intricate care devoted towards the uniforms and hairstyles of the era. With that being said, the film's crowning jewel for historical accuracy comes during the arrival of Hitler's personal plane. The moment the Führer's aircraft touches down the tarmac, every German officer smoking quickly stamps out their cigarettes. This innocuous looking gesture could easily be misinterpreted for a sign of respect within military ranks or be completely missed altogether. But actually, it holds far deeper meaning. Despite having a taste for barbiturates and cocaine, kind of really hard to overstate the amount of drugs this guy was on in the later stages of World War II, Hitler notoriously despised tobacco. As such, anybody puffing away in his presence was likely to land themselves in hot water. Those things will kill you, you know. Number 7. Accurate Naval Commands Master and Commander, The Far Side of the World Those of you who caught my video on Witness and Adams on The Truman Show, and if you haven't, please do, they're a fun time, should know that Australian filmmaker Peter Weir is a favourite of the channels. His 2003 effort, Master and Commander, The Far Side of the World, is one of his very best. Featuring one of Russell Crowe's best ever performances, it's Captain Jack Aubrey, the commander of the HMS Surprise during the Napoleonic Wars. Apart from being compellingly shot and performed, Master and Commander also features an extraordinary level of authenticity, with the rich tapestry of costumes, boats, and weaponry providing a profound sense of contemporary legitimacy to the proceedings. These faithful levels of accuracy even extend to naval commands used in the film. Russell Crowe's Jack Aubrey issues the instruction hard to larboard to turn the ship left during battle sequences. Larboard was a term that later became port, a change that wasn't adopted by the Navy until 18. 44. Weir's film takes place during the Napoleonic Wars, which came to a close in 1815. Come enjoy the little things like that. Number 6. 
Aldo Reigns Devil's Brigade patch. Inglorious Bastards. Brad Pitt's smooth talking Lieutenant Aldo the Apache Reign is a formidable commando in Inglorious Bastards. Reign climbed down from the Smoky Mountains, crossed 5,000 miles of water, fought his way across half of Sicily, and jumped out of a aeroplane just to get where he is now. Suffice to say, he did not do this to teach the Nazis a lesson in humanity. Maybe some Italian though. Gorlami. Bongiorno. Ugh. What a performance. Either way, Tarantino clearly sought to imbue his fictional charge with as much legitimacy as possible in order to underline Aldo's intimidating military credentials, highlighted by a red unit patch that can be seen on Pitt's character's shoulder. Said patch belongs to the Devil's Brigade, also known as the First Special Service Force and a World War II precursor to modern US and Canadian Special Forces. Much like the bastards in Tarantino's canon, the Devil's Brigade used small groups of men in raid, sabotage, and guerrilla warfare, similar to the British and Canadian commando units that pioneered those raids starting in 1940. Number 5. Deafening Underwater Explosions Dunkirk Employing stunning practical effects and thousands of extras to bring his vision of the 1940 Dunkirk evacuation to life, Christopher Nolan even enlisted boats used in the event itself for shooting. There are some key inaccuracies though, namely in that Dunkirk doesn't convey the sheer number of British and Allied servicemen trapped on the beach, which in reality numbered over 338,000. Harry Styles plays a significant role in carrying off one of Nolan's more meticulous pieces of wartime authenticity in Dunkirk. Styles' soldier Alex, along with several other soldiers across the course of Dunkirk, can be seen clutching his ears in agony underwater as the shockwaves from the endless explosions from Stuka dive bombers ripple through the depths. This all seems fairly obvious, but takes on an entirely new significance when one takes into account the fact that that sound travels four times faster underwater. Imagine the noise of an explosion in close proximity and then quadrupled that sensation. The pain caused by the detonation of a bomb or torpedo would have been excruciating, meaning that Alex's reaction is more than appropriate. Number four, the Dow Chemical Company. Apocalypse Now. Francis Ford Coppola went the extra mile in transporting his vision of Vietnam to the big screen in Apocalypse Now, marrying deranged glee and satire with harrowing depictions of combat. One of the best examples of the film's subtle brilliance is when Martin Sheen's Benjamin Willard can briefly be seen passing a black chemical barrel. While the sight may appear perfectly innocuous at first, closer examination reveals the foreboding truth behind the container in question. The bottom of the barrel is stamped with the words the Dow Chemical Company, one of the largest suppliers of Agent Orange during the Vietnam War. An enormously powerful pesticide used in industrial quantities to remove leaves and foliage from the trees that the Viet Cong hid amongst, Agent Orange caused multiple forms of cancer and other major health problems, as well as devastating vast areas of the Vietnamese countryside. Apocalypse Now conveys the wanton cruelty of this brand of warfare in a brief but affecting moment, showing a young Vietnamese child child casually sitting atop one of the barrels. It reiterates the casual callousness of warfare, so much so that it's something the film doesn't really draw major attention to, a tiny note in the background of a cacophony of pain and terror. Number 3. Morphine Warnings Hacksaw Ridge 2016's Hacksaw Ridge is an unforgettable war film and also one brimming with historical flourishes, telling the tale of Desmond Doss, a World War II conscientious objector and Medal of Honor recipient who dragged 75 men to safety without firing a shot during the bloody Battle of Okinawa. A massive element behind the tidal wave of acclaim for Hacksaw Ridge was the unflinchingly brutal manner in which the movie captured the Pacific theatre. One of the easiest to miss and most ridiculously detailed detailed aspects of warfare depicted in Hacksaw Ridge is the manner in which medics can be seen attaching empty morphine syrettes to an injured combatant's lapels. This seemingly innocuous act was performed during the heat of battle so that if a separate medic were to later come across the same soldier, they would not accidentally deliver an additional and potentially fatal dose of morphine to the stricken man. It's a tiny inclusion, but one that illustrates the dizzyingly horrifying nature of combat in the Pacific. Number 2. The Czech Consul 
scripts, Saving Private Ryan. Saving Private Ryan's scenes depicting the attack on Omaha Beach have been acclaimed as some of the most realistic war sequences ever made. Stories of World War II veterans breaking down or even leaving theaters due to how authentically Steven Spielberg captured the D-Day landings are a testament to the level of detail and reverence that went into the production. Arguably, the most nuanced piece of detail in Saving Private Ryan comes as two surrendering Wehrmacht soldiers are summarily executed by advancing American forces. Spielberg left the scene without subtitles, meaning that the heartbreaking circumstances behind the Perth demise are left unclear to the vast majority of viewers. A particularly gloomy translation of the soldiers' desperate pleas reveal that they are actually Czech conscripts, shanghaied into the German forces following the invasion of what was then Czechoslovakia. Fritley trying to explain as such, this tragically does nothing to prevent them from being mercilessly gunned down. And number one, War Daddy's Sweetheart Pistol, Fury. David Ayer's Fury is a superbly acted, visceral depiction of World War II. The 2014 offering follows the harrowing journey of the eponymous M4 Sherman and her crew during the final weeks of the war in Europe. The director's intricate attention to detail is best exemplified by Brad Pitt's Don War Daddy Collier's Sidearm, a Smith & Wesson 1917 featuring a sweetheart grip. Although it wasn't common, servicemen were known to occasionally salvage acrylic from crashed aircraft windows using the clear material to replace their handgun grips. This allowed their weapons to feature a picture of a loved one or a celebrity. The grip features a full body pinup shot, typical of what one would expect from a soldier. However, a blink and you'll miss it glimpse of the weapon the other side reveals a black and white portrait of an unknown woman likely war at a sweetheart. It's also worth noting that the typical sidearm for the era for US forces was the Colt M1911, as opposed to war at a Smith & Wesson. War that he has foregone the standard issue weapon again, with Fury also showing him wielding an STG-44, likely stolen from a deceased Wehrmacht soldier. It's also worth noting that it wasn't uncommon for relatives to send sidearms to soldiers serving in World War II, which is perhaps how war Daddy was able to retain his revolver for active service. And those were 10 insanely accurate war movie details. Do you folks have any examples of where a war movie blew your mind with historical accuracy? Let me know down in the comments below. Don't forget to do a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel for more so you don't miss another upload. Either way, thank you all for watching. I've been Ewan and hopefully I'll catch you next time.